Hello and welcome to Viewpoint. This week we took the show out of the studio to come and talk with AFL-CIO President Richard Trumka about something that seems to be making headlines everywhere, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, or rather, TPP. Thank you so much for sitting down and speaking with us. Appreciate that. Thanks for having me on the show. I always like to be with machinists. Oh, excellent, excellent. We love to hear that, actually. Tell me, let's start with the basics. Give me a short synopsis of what is TPP and where did it come from? Because that's the question I get asked most often. TPP is a, is a trade agreement called the Trans-Pacific Partnership. It covers uh, 13 different countries, uh, from Australia to Mexico to the U.S., uh, to Malaysia, Brunei, and Japan, and several countries in between. I was started uh, over five years ago by the Obama administration. They started negotiating it, and five years ago, uh, we engaged with them, trying to make this an agreement that could actually work for America's workers. We gave to them a couple of hundred suggested changes from the last text that they had. Uh, unfortunately, they've uh, ignored all but a, a very small number of them that are insignificant. And so we now have an agreement that would be characterized best as NAFTA on steroids. You know, it's funny, I hear that over and over and over again. And unfortunately, for the working class, that's a high alert word when you start saying NAFTA, especially if you're saying NAFTA on steroids. What does that mean? How did it kind of get that moniker? Well, it, it should be a high alert for every worker out there because this agreement covers 40% of the world's GDP. And it also has a docking provision, which means other countries in the future can come on to this agreement. And we can end up never negotiating another trade agreement again. So that's why this one is so especially important to get right because it is large, it will last forever, and it could cover more and more and more countries. You know, there's not a machinist out there who doesn't fear when they hear the word NAFTA because we all watched what happened in Galesburg, Illinois when Maytag left. So right now, there is this sort of fear, this sort of a, a bubble of, of oh, oh no, what's coming next? What are we gonna be able to do to try and stop this? Well, we're working very hard. We're in the districts. Uh, first thing you can do, is contact your senator and congressman immediately and have them vote against Fast Track and have them vote against TPP because in its current form, it will be destructive to the American economy and the American worker. Uh, that's the first thing you can do. Uh, and then you can get all your coworkers uh, to do exactly the same thing, to educate them uh, and then to mobilize them and get them out. And remember, uh, this is a vote that's gonna determine the future of our economy. This is a vote that's going to determine our future and whether our, our wages raise or whether they don't raise. And we have to remember those that supported us and those that didn't. Now you just used the term fast track and I think a lot of people are familiar with that situation. But can you explain a little bit about what that means and kind of what now? Fast track, the, the Constitution gives uh, the Congress the authority and obligation uh, to negotiate trade agreements. Congress then can delegate that uh, to the president, which is what they do. But uh, in the fast track that we have, what, it, what a fast track does is it allows the president to negotiate an agreement and bring it back. It doesn't get amended. It can't be filibustered. It's a straight up or a straight down vote. And here's the, here's the real kicker. The way that Congress is supposed to control the delegation of power that they gave to the president is they set negotiating objectives. And they say you have to do this, 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 and this. The joke of this fast track is that the president gets to decide whether he met those objectives or not, not Congress. And there's never been a president yet who hasn't said, oh, of course I met those objectives. Uh, it's a wonderful agreement. Trust me, it's gonna be good for you. And we did. We did it in NAFTA, we did it in CAFTA. And every one of those agreements were bad. None of them lived up to, to the promises that they said they would do. Uh, none of them increased our trade. We still have record deficits every year, uh, four to five hundred billion a year in trade deficits year after year. Uh, and so now they come to us yet another time with this gigantic agreement that covers 40% of the world's GDP and they say, 
trust us. It's going to be good. Okay, but why all the secrecy? I mean, a lot of middle America is out there saying, is this even legal? Because I don't, we love throwing around the term fast track, but that's such an inside the beltway sort of term. So is this legal? Where is all this secrecy coming from? I mean, we promoted President Obama as pro-labor. Like, why is he doing this to us? That's a good question. Uh, I mean, I don't know the answer to that. I think you'd have to ask President Obama why he's doing it. But uh, the secrecy comes from his administration. Because this, this, the documents associated with this trade agreement are classified. If you leak classified documents, it's a violation of the law. No other trade agreement has ever been classified. Now, they've kept them tight to the chest so they didn't get out, but uh, they don't. So what they want to do is they drop this 2,000-page uh, agreement, 22 chapters on you. Uh, you got a month or so to read it. Uh, and look at it, and they hope that nobody will catch all the little details, and then you vote it up or down. You can't amend it. You can't filibuster it. Think about this. Every other piece of legislation that faces you, that affects our, our economy and our well-being, tax laws, manufacturing laws, regulations, health and safety, all of those things get debated in Congress, they can be amended in Congress, and then you vote except this one, the most bohemoth, the one that affects our lives or our livelihoods the most, and it doesn't get debated except for up or down vote. It can't be amended. You're upset, personally, it seems like. I am, because I've seen what these agreements have done to workers' lives. We've lost 60,000 factories since the year 2000. Every one of those factory closings has a history of broken lives, and broken promises. Workers whose standard of living has been cut in half. Communities that have been devastated. And it doesn't have to be. Look, here's the bottom line with all of this stuff. They want us to believe that the economy is like the weather. That there's nothing you can do about it. No matter what, that you're stuck with it. But the economy is not like the weather. The economy is nothing but a set of rules. Those rules are made by the men and women that we elect, and those rules decide the winners and the losers. And this is one of the big rulemaking times right now. This agreement will decide who wins and who loses. And I can tell you, Wall Street will win. They will be ecstatic. Corporate America will win. They will be gleeful. But the American worker and our communities and the general public are the losers. Do you think that middle America, or working America, knows that, realizes what's at stake? Because you and I can sit here and talk about it, and we can talk about it in D.C., and we can storm Capitol Hill, as we do, but if I go home and talk to my mother's neighbors, do they realize what's at stake here? I think a lot of workers do. Uh, especially those that have seen uh, the economy devastated. I don't think there's a worker out there who doesn't know somebody who's lost their job, had a factory close, a job uh, get, had their standard of living slashed. Somebody out there in your family's been affected. In my family, they've been affected. So I, I think they have a sense for it. I don't know that they put the focus on it and say, oh, it's fast track, but they know that not, not you know, keeping an agreement secret and then voting it up or down, they, they know that's wrong. I mean, they don't have to be told. They instinctively know that. They know that the trade agreements that to date haven't worked because it's devastated their communities and their way of life. They know that. The ones that don't know that are the people that live in this little bubble in Washington, D.C., who have lobbyists come in and lay a lot of cash down. There'll be more lobbyists on this hill trying to get this passed than we probably have uh, in, in half of our platoons uh, and battalions uh, in, in the military. They'll, they'll be coming in in record numbers. Wall Street, this is a must for them because this isn't really a trade agreement. It's an investment agreement. It's not to protect workers. It's to protect investment. And that's why it's so dangerous. So if we call, if we make the phone calls, we call our Congress, we say no to fast track, no to this bill, 
Will it make a difference? Because we, I mean, look at the lobbyists. They have so much that we don't have. They have money, they have resources. We're working class Americans. We're just, I mean, a lot of us are just trying to get by. Yeah, but when we come together, we got a whole lot louder voice than Wall Street does. That's the beauty of solidarity. And that's why us sticking together will make a difference. And here's what else will make a difference. (laughs) When they turn their back on us, when we needed them, come election time, when they need us, it's our turn to speak. So that's our day, that's our moment, huh? That's our turn to speak. All right, let's end on a high note. Give me some words of wisdom. Give me some encouragement for the next generation of workers. We are going to stop this. We are going to turn this around and have a good trade deal maybe once. We're going to beat this. We are. We're going to beat it in in, in the House uh, and and be able to turn it around. And then hopefully we can all sit down and work out an agreement that really works for everybody. A trade agreement that works for workers, not just Wall Street. We can get that done, and I think we can accomplish that here. If our members right now get on the phones, do some door knocking, uh, let their representatives know, we're watching, we're paying attention, this is a us or them vote. If you're with us, we're for you. If you're with them, have them on election day come and elect you. Hmm, Not much more to say to that. (laughs) Thank you very much for joining us. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. It's always great to be with the machinists. Excellent. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. I'm Deirdre Kanievsky.